everyone. Hope you guys are all doing well. My name is D'Angelo and, and welcome to uh, my channel where we're going to play uh, or, or do, do our session zero of a new project that I call Death March, which is a super casual and chill name uh, where a group of my dear friends uh, play D&D with me and we're going to create characters today, establish relationships and all that good stuff. Um, and at the very end of the session, we're going to go ahead and, and roll for the actual module. So they don't even know what adventure befalls them, whether it be uh, gothic horror like Curse of Stride or an adventure like Ghost of Salt Marsh, where they're on a seafaring, you know, uh, experience and all that kind of stuff. And who knows all else? And this gives them the chance to modify the character, whatever they wish, um, prior to knowing what module it is. And then after that, they'll just roll in and go sort of from there. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so what I'm going to do really quick is uh, I am going to have everyone sort of go around the uh, the table and be able to introduce themselves and how amazing they are. Um, so uh, first, we're going to go ahead and go with Benji. You can find me online at Chance47 pretty much everywhere, uh, except for TikTok, but I don't post TikTok. So uh, I'm constantly on TikTok, but I don't post any TikTok. Same mood. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm very excited to be here. I can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> Amazing. And then going over to Isabel. Hello, everyone. My name is Isabel. Um, I no longer really post on the internet, but you can still technically find me everywhere at, at Isabel is okay. Um, you can use any and all pronouns for me um, as long as you're respectful. It's all good. And um, yeah, I am a teacher RPG performer and writer, and my day job is engineering. Um, and uh, as, as well as Jen is, we are uh, rules lawyer, public defendants. So we don't know the rules yet for 2024, but we trust we will be defending the players. Oh, I'm sure by the end of this, you guys are going to be like, um, actually, as uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys know it. So amazing. And then Adam. thought I was gonna be ready and I wasn't uh hi I'm Adam uh Adamus Lamas everywhere and I forgot what I was gonna say you find me in the main streets of whatever uh place we end up being at setting we're in and I will not know the rules and I will just sow chaos as one does yes amazing and then Jen uh, I'm Jen I'm the underscore Lozelda on all corners of the internet um I also make dice, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, at Long Dog Dice. I actually, I actually just put up some new ones, like, literally an hour oh, ago. Oh. Uh, and, yeah, and I'm super excited to be here and to uh, be uh, co co lawyering all of the new rules as we figure all of this out uh, going forward. And I'm I'm excited to play with some new people and actually get to play D&D again. It's right? It's been a long time since I've been on this side. That's yes, and it's it's always a good time opportunity to give Forever DMs a chance to be a player and get to uh, uh, get to, to you know break all the the plots and uh, all the the different things. So, uh, oh, my name is uh, D'Angelo Murillo, and um, I am a game designer, a writer, a Forever Dungeon Master. Uh, you can find me on all over the social medias at you know that underscore D'Angelo. If you're here, then you probably already like uh, follow me, which is awesome. If you don't, uh, then you can. If you ever have a good time watching these streams and want to uh, play with me yourself, you can always go to start playing games and find me on there. And uh, it's a great experience running a ton of D and D because a new edition of Dungeons and Dragons just dropped, which is the 2024 sort of edition, 5.5, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we will actually be embracing it, you know, here unless uh, you know. The consensus is that everyone hates it, but uh, so far it seems like everyone's enjoying the different changes uh, for, you know, malicious or reasonable reasons, you know, so it's, uh, so it's good. Uh, yeah, so we will go ahead and uh, let you know now that some of us have actually looked at the rules here, so we're coming into this with some knowledge of it, but there is a lot of it that we actually don't know, so we're going to be navigating this as we, you know, kind of cross these different sort of uh, roads and bridges uh, as we find stuff on D&D &D Beyond that seems unique. Uh, for example, all the weapons have different properties now, and they all have different things that could happen. 
So in this session, it is a session zero. So we're gonna be establishing and setting up a lot of things for the actual campaign. Um, prior to this, in the pre-call of Death March, um, I actually you know, reached out to everyone and gave them the opportunity to explain to me their boundaries and all that kind of stuff, like, kind of like you know, lines and veils and everything. Uh, and they were able to provide some of that information to me. So that part's been good. Uh, so in this one, we're gonna go ahead and go over characters and all that sort of stuff. But before we do that, uh, what I'd love to do at the beginning of every single you know episode of Death March is have a little bit of a banter session to hang out with my friends as a, a mandatory fun time, if you will, and uh, be able to, to just talk a little bit. And so today's topic will actually be a very relevant discussion of how did you actually get into tabletop role playing games and, you know, uh, D&D as well uh, for this. So um, I will uh, kick it over to opposite order and do Jen first. How did you get into okay. TTRPGs? Um. I I know a lot of people have been playing forever. I feel like I'm still kind of new-ish to it. I think I didn't start playing... I think I started playing like five years ago. Um, I guess a little bit longer. Um, maybe like six. Six or seven. Um, not too terribly long, though. Uh, and it was because I had... Um, the place I was working at the time, a friend of mine was like... Gung-ho, super into... Like, was like gotta get into D&D, and I was like, look, I am a huge nerd, I am not that kind of nerd, okay, that's a little too much that was my reaction to it um, and he was very insistent I would enjoy it, and then at some point, um, this was shortly after, like, I think the uh, the first arc of the, or the first campaign of the Adventure Zone had been going on for a little bit, I think they were on like, arc 4 or 5 at that point, and he was like, I think you I think you'd really like this. You should listen to it. And I was like, okay, I don't want to play your game. And now you want me to listen to other people play it? What is wrong <laughs> with you? Um, and so he was harassing me for months. And finally, I was going to have to do a very long road trip. I was going to be in a car by myself for 10 hours. And he was like, listen to it. Start on arc two. Listen to that one. I feel like that'll hook you. And if it doesn't, I will never bother you again. It's like, fine. So I listened to Murder on the Rockport on my way to where I was going. And then I listened to Arc 1 on my way back. And over the next two and a half weeks, I binged all of it. And I was like, you were right. I'm sorry. So I got super into listening to it then. And so I was, he was like, great. I want to start a game. And I was like, I'm down. Um, so in a very short period of time, I went from that is so nerdy to, oh, my God, inject it directly into my veins. Uh, and you even started <laughs> a, a side hustle, a business based off yeah. of. Yeah. And now reason. I make dice. <laughs> Oh my god! I got and, real hard into it. So yeah, that was a, that was how I got started. So thanks, Ben. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Amazing! Oh my gosh! And then Adam. All right. Um, where I was in like uh, I was volunteering at a at a comedy club, and then I was doing improv, and then there was some improvisers there like, "Hey, we play D and D. You want to play?" I was like. Yeah, okay. And I went, and it was tons of fun. And then we, like, we had a couple sessions, and we never played again. And yep. then, yeah. And Such so is I, the way, yeah. I went online. I found some people. I played a couple, like, one-shots, uh, did a couple campaigns. And then we were like, all right, that was fun. We're going to, let's start a new campaign. And nobody wanted to DM. And I was like, fuck, I want to play. I guess I'll, I'll do it. I'll take it. <laughs> And then I DM'd, and I had no clue what I was doing, and made tons of mistakes. Uh, but, it, you know, it worked out. It's great. <laughs> That's and now incredible. I'm here. That's right. Yep. You made it. <laughs> for better or for worse. Yeah, there you go. And then, for, and then Isabel. Yeah, I think maybe I've been playing the least amount of time of ever in here, because I think... I grew up really loving, like, board games and being super nerdy, a huge fantasy nerd, like, my entire life. Um, but I never really got into tabletop until I started listening or like watching Dimension 20 when, in like 2021, I want to say. And I just absolutely fell in love with it because I was like, oh my God, like you can tell like really, and also NADPOD, it was, is D20 a NADPOD? And then I think at the, there was like a point in NADPOD where it switches from like silly goofy to like. I was like crying over it like in uh, there was like there's like a moment in campaign one where it's like there's this really beautiful like tragic moment and I was like 
oh my god, this is what D and D can be. Like D and D can be so much more than just like a board game. Like it, you can tell like really beautiful, lovely stories with it um, that are also silly and fun and a good time. And so I also went online to try and find people. Um, had a little bit of toxic players to play yep. with, and so then I was like, you know what? Maybe I just want to play with people that I know and like reconnect with some of my like nerdier friends. And so I became um, a DM for my home game, who I still play with very often. Um, but then I got like so obsessed with D and D that I was like, okay, I can't stop thinking about this. I want to play in. I want to play as a player in games. So I started doing like. Um, charity streams and that's how I started getting involved in like any sort of streaming at all is just like being a player in like a lot of different like charity streams and then I just met a lot of people who are like hardcore like d and Ders and TTRPGers who do it as like a living and I'm very very lucky to have met some really lovely wonderful friends um through this space and uh yeah so and then that's sort of where I am now where I'm just like I don't really stream a lot but when I do it's like really wonderful kind people like d'angelo <laughs> and and stuff like that and um i mostly play it in like home games but yeah i do i do get like severely obsessed with these games so uh yeah that's sort of my my nerd story amazing and i appreciate that comment i, I really appreciate it <laughs> but it, benji oh man well so story time um it starts actually when I was very young because my cousins played D and D, and so I played a few D and D games. And then I wanted to get my friends involved in D and D when I was in junior high. So we wanted to start a D and D club. But this is back when, not to age myself, back when everyone thought D and D was satanic and therefore bad. So no faculty would sponsor our D and D club club group and so my D&D dreams were smashed I never played the game again never touched it until um I don't know if you all remember but we found ourselves in a pandemic and uh a couple of friends were like we're playing D&D do you want to give it a shot I was like yes please anything I live on my own please entertain me uh I played maybe two sessions of D&D and I was like, I want more. I want so much more. And I wanted, I'm a big horror fan. And so I literally Googled D&D but horror. And it was like, you should try Vampire. You should try Call of Cthulhu, <laughs> Delta Green. And that's how I found D'Angelo actually. Cause I was like, I want to play Vampire. And I uh, played Vampire with D'Angelo for a very long time. Um, and that's primarily what I play is like Vampire, Delta Green, Call of Cthulhu, but I have my home game D and D, and so I'm very excited to to ramp it up and try it out. So I'm I think I'm fairly new too ish technically, even though when I was very young there was a brief dalliance in it. Um, but really and truly, I've only been hardcore doing it for the past few years. Yeah, it definitely seems like a lot of people got in during the pandemic, you know, the, the 2020 and all that kind of stuff when it, it, everyone was at home and Zoom became more popular and all that and people find online resources to do it. Yeah, that, uh, that's incredible. It's a wonderful to hear all of your guys' stories. For me, um, I've always been a fan of like fantasy and everything. Uh, in high school, I got horribly addicted to World of Warcraft, would spend way too much time there and everything like that. And then sure enough, in 2008, I met my like geeky drug dealer essentially uh where he uh not actually a drug dealer but like he, he exposed me to a bunch of geeky stuff and um he like showed me warhammer that ruined my life and it's like i'm still addicted to warhammer and then he also introduced me to uh dungeons and dragons and a bunch of other stuff and everything and i started listening to a back then i think it was one of the first ap's i'm not sure which was acquisitions incorporated uh, with like chris perkins and then the guys from penny arcade and then scott kurtz and everything and it was so funny and it was so good that i was like oh my god like same with isabel where it's like this is good this is what you know D D actually could be like it's actually like riveting stories it wasn't they didn't have so much like depth but they had a lot of comedic value and it was like actually a lot of fun and everything so i uh 
like searched around for groups and it was really hard because it was back in like 2008 so it was like uh only the only thing i could find was a vampire the masquerade larp group that was here in sort of arizona and i got rejected by that larp group and then i was like okay well i guess i'm just gonna spend all my paycheck on a uh the fourth edition which just came out at the time uh, player's handbook and uh, monster manual and dungeon master's guide and then just try to learn it and then try to get a group together and sure enough I put it on Facebook and I was like does anyone want to like you know play or whatever and then I got a huge response uh, actually not a huge response I got like a few response from people enough to start a group and uh, it was so broken I railroaded a ton and did every mistake in the book that you could uh, think of and they still wanted to come back for more and it got to the point where I would actually like go to parties. One, I would get invited to parties. Never did that happen before I got into Dungeons Dragons, which is a wild, like, it seems like polar opposite experience. Uh, but sure enough, it would be like the Godfather experience where I'd be there chilling with like a beer or whatever. And then groups of people would come up and be like, this is D'Angelo. Like, if you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, you have to get in his good graces. And I'm like, I'm just a normal dude. It's good to see you. And then uh, sure enough, they're like, I want to play. I don't care. Anytime, any place, please let me know. We'll buy all the pizza. We'll like, you know, whatever. And I was like, sure. And then it got so bad to the point where I had four groups uh going every week and uh it was in like shared universes it was like games of thrones style and it got so bad that people actually got like into legitimate real life uh feuds over it because they'd be like my kingdom hates your kingdom and i can't believe you guys did this to us how dare you and uh, that's the point where i was like all right no more you guys are all in your you know like own worlds like uh and all that so it's been a lot of fun and now fast forward to everything uh I've now played a ton of TTRPGs and do it as my like second job essentially, and it's been a uh, it's been a lot of fun. Tabletop role playing games have definitely changed my life for for the better. Uh, I would say uh, my wife hates it because of uh, the bookshelves are now filled of all these different TTRPG books, and uh, but you know it's fine, it's fine, it's all good. So that's amazing. It's it's good to hear everyone's uh, experiences. So awesome. So I'm excited to have you guys here with me to play some module that we don't know quite yet. Um, so I would love to hear what characters you guys actually are, are thinking of bringing to the table for this campaign. Um, and uh, does anyone want to go first with whatever strong concepts they might have, or even just loose concepts, whichever? Oh, Adam, you're muted. Uh, that was not a volunteering. Uh, was, <laughs> oh, you're I was weighing, like, you're talking, so. I was exactly. weighing if they were strong or loose I'll, concepts. I'll, vol <laughs> I'll volunteer if, if, sure, if everyone yeah. needs more time. I know a lot of us have like a decent um, concept, but I'll talk about mine first. So I have an unnamed wizard because I really struggle with names. So maybe we can come up with a name together during sometime during this session. But I because like the concept for this game as D'Angelo pitched it to us was like a very chill, like full campaign game. I really wanted to play a wizard because I am a silly little wizard main and I have not gotten to like really experience like, like the flex. full yeah. like levels, like fully leveling a wizard. Um, so I'm really, I'm also a nerd in real life. So it's easy for me to RP as a wizard um, cause it's, Pretty close. Uh, so yeah, so I created a tiefling wizard um, and I'm going to do um, Order of Scribes, which I'm really excited about because it's basically like the wizard subclass of wizards. It's like all about like you have like an awakened spell book and it's all about like, it's all about your spells and like your practice as a wizard um, and yeah, and then so and then I'm also sort of just like leaning into sort of the um, like vibe of being a tiefling and sort of um, that whole like, I don't know. I'm very excited about the 2024 tiefling yeah. rules and like the new spells that you get. Um, uh, so yeah, I have like a pretty pretty loose like idea um so far i did choose my alignment to be chaotic good um although i feel like people would argue i'm more lawful good but i i'm like i i'm like very much a rule follower unless i think the rule is stupid then i don't believe in it yeah. so <laughs> i feel like that maybe falls under chaotic good um yeah so i still need a name for her um but i'm very excited to play a very like kind of intense 
dark, like gothic nerd is sort of the vibe I'm going for. <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. One thing that's really awesome about the 2024 uh, book is that they stripped away any of the sort of like attributes you get for picking a, uh, a race, species, heritage, whatever you want to call them. And so that way it has a, a more like narrative sort of appeal and you should choose whatever you'd like to and then give them it based on their backgrounds. So that's pretty awesome uh, to hear. So we have a wizard, you know, some damage dealing, controlling, you know, crowd controlling, whatever the case might be, whatever, which way you lean. Uh, who wants to go next? What else do you guys have? If you want to all be wizards, that's totally cool as well. I'm down. <laughs> that party would die so fast. No, I was going to say, I'm like so squishy. I need someone to protect me. <laughs> um, I have a, I have a question. For yes. about your about your unnamed wizard because I'm trying yes. I'm trying to help come up with with name I know, vibes for vibes, you. Vibes, yes. So you said you're gonna do a, a scribe an order of scribes wizard. Yeah. You're doing a tiefling. What color is your tiefling? <gasps> yeah, that is such a good question. Um, she is like very purple vibes. Very purple. Very all purple right. Vibes. All right. I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You mentioned okay. you're gonna get a dice set that that matches them, right? But, uh... Yes. I'm like looking through the dice I currently have, and I have like these like um like purpley pink they're like blue and purple dice nice. like glittery vibes so that's the that's and then i have my crown of candy dice as well oh nice. that's so awesome yeah such a good series All i right. know i know i'm like trying to think of of good <laughs> good names for her as well okay i'm gonna ponder now that i know purple tiefling scribe got it <laughs> All right, Jen. What do you What do you got? A super non broken chill it's character. It's totally right? not broken. No, Mostly it's totally role fine. play focus, not really. Kind uh, of... So yeah. So I started with I wanted to pick I wanted to pick my class versus what I always do. Uh, and originally I was going to play a cleric, and then we were going to do twenty twenty four rules, and then the twenty twenty four rules came out, and I read them, and I was like, I don't want to be cleric anymore. I'm sad. Um, so I I usually play spellcasters. But the monk class has always looked a little like the, if I was going to play something martial, that was going to be where I went. So that's what I'm actually doing for this one. Um, I have chosen I'm going to go for a monk um, and I'm going to use the uh, the warrior of shadow uh, subclass out of the new the new rule set. I did not pick a previous subclass, so I'll be doing that. Um, when I was going to do a cleric, I thought I was going to do a grave domain cleric. So I'd kind of like already built a lot of this character in my head of what I wanted that to look like. And I ended up keeping a lot of those concepts over here. So I have my um, my Shadar Kai, uh, which for anybody who doesn't know, it is kind of like one of the elf varieties kind of based out of the Shadowfell. Um, I have a Shadar Kai monk. Her name is Edie Arakin. Um, uh, name is Edith, but Edie, everyone calls her Edie. Um, and I've kind of built her with a bit of like the guide background of being like she tries to be it tends to like serve as kind of like escort like between places for people who need like some extra protection or just some extra like guidance through an area when they're traveling from from place to place uh, as that's kind of it's gonna be kind of her vibe um, and I didn't realize that those choices of being a guide and being a Shadar Kai came with some other mechanical things that get real fun with some of the monk things. So, um, sorry, not sorry. There will be a lot of that happening. It's um, all good. Yeah. I'm I, very excited about some of these things. I expect to get steamrolled, so don't even worry about it. Uh, It'll be New totally Lord Drop great. Jen is a secret edgelord? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh no, I was God. literally just thinking we both picked like such goth girls. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I've got um so Shatter Kai, like usually like very pale skin, so very pale, and I've got like um I picture with like a dark purple, like that kind of like raven purple where it's like black, except when it's not, and it's got that iridescent purple kind of thing going on with it. So like that's that hair kind of it's a little bit short, um, and then wears some like like actual like pants in like a like I, what I I posted the thing that I built in Hero Forge for you guys earlier. Um, wears kind of like sleeveless, like close kind of clothing, so that way she can move and not get tangled up in her in her stuff. Amazing! I really hope that all of you chose goth like characters, and then we get Wild Beyond the Witchlight, where it's like a Fey Wild adventure, and you guys are just like, <laughs> gonna be great. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and then uh, Benji, what do you what do you have in mind for what you're gonna bring? Well. Up? I was going to say Benji has to go next now. <laughs> yeah, right. Funny you should mention it. Uh, the vampire player, the Delta Green player. Like, what do you want to do? Yeah. 
I'm I'm thinking now maybe our backstory is we all met at a concert because uh, I'm going for a male elf warlock drow, uh, and he's a little gothy, guys. He's a little he's a little um, a little dark and twisty. He's his patron is an arch fae. And the idea in my backstory basically is that he was out partying one night, got drunk, and slept with this archfey, and didn't realize that he had promised away his soul in exchange for magic powers. So, kind of his his patron is his ex. Um, I love that. There you go. I'm so obsessed with that concept. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, his patron is his ex, and uh, picture dark drow skin like silver spiky hair, bright yellow eyes. Uh, uh, whereas I picture him like in like a dark ankle length robe hoodie kind of thing. Like he's very dark, twisty, gothy in a way. He has a familiar, which is a spider who, uh, I have to come up with a name for the spider. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but I basically think he has like a, a rose hair tarantula uh, that is his familiar um, or whatever the D&D equivalent of that would be. Yeah, He is the charlatan background. He is lawful evil for his uh, alignment. Basically, uh, I know this is going to, this is going to shock you, D'Angelo. I went for a high charisma low Wild. intelligence character Bold. um let's go innovative. i'm the opposite let's go <laughs> let's freaking go <laughs> never seen uh, it before never seen it before that backstory i only play like high charisma face characters Are you doing well yeah you do it really really well yeah that's good thank you i like i say it's my way of being a, a face character in real life because in real life i'm not like i'm not an extrovert i'm not See, I can't even imagine that because all I know you to be is charismatic and like very uh, like outgoing. So that's like wild. Wallflower. I am a wallflower. And uh, so, yeah. And I think his name is Zeke spelled Z-E-E-K. Zeke Craven. Craven with a C or a K? With a C. Okay. Yes. Zeke Craven in honor of one of my favorite film directors. That's good. Miles Craven? Wes? No, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Craven? You know, John. John the Craven. Lesson. Everyone's favorite. Yeah, Steve. Everyone's favorite Craven. Uh, everyone's favorite Craven. <laughs> Amazing. And then That's Adam. So Craven. Stop. <laughs> oh, my God. And we're ending stream. I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> Oh, no. My goal we is to be the end of the stream at some point. I know, right? I, Look, I'm done. Yeah. I was I was in a bathroom and there was graffiti on the wall that said um, Raven was here, and I was like, I wonder. And then I looked down and said, Yes, that Raven. I was like, Oh my god, you got me. <laughs> That's amazing. Sorry. Uh, I actually made two characters because I wasn't sure. Uh, one is is definitely more well thought out. Um, and it is Harrison Ford the 13th, a.k.a. Lucky. Uh, he's a rabbit who lost uh, his paw. And he is a bard of the dance. And he can steal. And he's not super charismatic. I mean, he is because he's a bard, but he's more stealthy and steely. And a lot of you know people have tried to take advantage of that. And every time he's been in a party, the party always dies, but he survives because he's lucky. Um, and yeah, it's, and then I also made a um, a fairy barbarian because I think Isabel was talking about fairies and and or barbarians. Well, no, Jen was talking about bar- barbarians. Isabel was talking about fairies, and this one was Kellogg Smacks, and <laughs> they are just like a pirate uh, fairy barbarian. I don't I know which that. one I want to play. I, I mean, I like Bards more, so I'll probably go there. But I mean, Kellogg's Max sounds fun too. <laughs> I like I like both of these because, like, 
physically, like, my character is set up to be very gothy. I didn't intend to play her very gothy. But then we ended up with all this other goth stuff, and I'm curious what Jay's gonna end up doing. And I'm like, maybe I do have to be goth just so we could just be four goth people, and, and then, then we have, a, like, a fairy barbarian or <laughs> a, a dancing rabbit. rabbit. Like, Both <laughs> so funny. You know Both what? so oh funny. The token no. of no really it's so funny because as we were going through all our little goth babies i was like oh my gosh we all made the little the little edgy rogue sitting at the edge of camp like having the same alignment as a party but not trusting anyone and uh but actually it's the inverse where we have we're gonna have one happy-go-lucky guy who's like surrounded by a bunch of edge lords and i think that's so funny oh god (laughs) I love that's both sweet. of these concepts for you. I love both of these. No, they're both excellent. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. See, it's it's like what do they say? In, in in comedy is like a sane character in a world of like crazy people, or a, a crazy character in a world of sane people, and all that kind of stuff. So now I don't know what you guys have because uh, <laughs> you're just like all clashing. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. So I would love to hear about how you guys, what your relationships are in. The situation, whether you're an adventuring group or a group of friends that you know grew up together, or whatever the case might be, uh, allies of convenience, um, whether you're just doing this to be able to get something out of it, whatever the case might be, which I know is difficult because we don't even know what the setting is or what the situation might be, but just loosely, you know, ideas and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I think loosely it's very easy for me to fall in with pretty much anybody just mm-hmm. because I've like established the idea. It's like, cool, it's like I'm a guide for different areas. So it's like if anybody ever traveled anywhere, it's very easy to be like, oh, we crossed paths. Like I went with you just as like, a, you know, as either your trail guide or like your extra set of like protection hands, like maybe for our squishy wizard, you're like, I, was I know where I'm going. I <laughs> No, I know I'm I was, going, but if I trip over a stick, I'm going to die. So Jen, I was literally going to say, I feel like you could absolutely be some sort of like protector or guide for my squishy wizard because I Perfect. like she's order of scribes. She's a tiefling and her background is scribes. So she's like my whole idea for her is that she's just like very much an academic. She's giving dark <laughs> academia, if you will. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like pairing with any of the martial classes could be a fun like oh i needed protection for some like mission or something i feel like like maybe like i was hired once and then i just felt so bad i was like i'm just gonna like stick around because i'm afraid if i look away something's gonna happen i'll simply pass away so i just like at the very least check in every once in a while just like i I also i happen to run into you in places just to like (laughs) Truly, that fits so well, because I will say um, I rolled a really wild spread of stats. So uh, I have a minus one to strength, a minus one to wisdom, and a minus one to charisma. So, boy. (laughs) So she is a little lost sometimes. (laughs) Incredible. I do have a really good, like, the other stats are plus two, plus three, plus four, but still. (laughs) I like to imagine. She's very delicate. (laughs) I like to imagine that uh, Adam's character is like a noble that has the money to pay you guys. And you guys are just like, all right, I guess we'll just keep hanging out with him because uh, <laughs> he's, he's financing everything, <laughs> even though that's like so contrast to what. Uh, what it that's true. Like, Adam, do you f- do you feel like you're leaning more towards Bard or like what kind of background you're leaning towards? Um, I mean, I, I do love a Bard. Because I I can definitely go Barty. And uh, I don't really have a background outside of, like, I guess, you know, them being a wanderer a bit. But that could also easily play into they have money because you have money to travel. (laughs) And uh, group composition-wise, you know, having a bard would be a supportive sort of, like, role in the group. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, you know. You can do whatever you want to. Uh, but there are, like, uh, benefits to leaning that way that you can, you know, have that kind of situation. Uh, but, you know, having more meat on the table with the barbarian also would be beneficial. That That's never going to hurt, uh, ever. Yeah, uh, I would say just go with what you think is going to be more fun yeah. to play, because both would be really great additions to the party, I think. And I can't yeah. remember what Jay said they were going to do. Uh let me see really quick. Though. Jay did post something. Yeah, I want to say. 
that because with my accidentally broken things, I know I'm oh, not, I'm not yeah, like playing a cleric, but I can still cover some of the cleric abilities. So if you're like, oh, I should be a bard so I can heal people, don't worry about that. <laughs> right. I I think Jay mentioned that they were going to write it down and then they did not. Oh, good. So, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so we might have to follow up um, before the next session. That's really cool. And but, again, whatever you guys want to play, I am yeah. down with. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Okay. Um, Benji, do you have any thoughts on how you might fit in with any of the people that have been kind of established? Maybe maybe that can start help building a narrative for... Yeah, so Bard what's interesting um, is, so I went the charlatan background with my character and also like high deception, high persuasion. Uh, I picture him someone who uses disguise self indiscriminately like just constantly playing people and so if there was maybe a rich bard on the team or there was like a wealthy mark on the team or something like that maybe or maybe it's a patron sort of situation like a Benji I really think that with my negative one to wisdom that you could I could easily have been scammed by you. I think my wizard as very as very high end, very low wisdom and very low charisma and would need like would be easily fast talked by someone. I also think I put their wealth as like comfortable or something because I was like they're like an academic wizard like in sure, D&D yeah. you kind of need to have money to be a wizard. So like I forgot what I put my starting gold as but like and then i even had like a decent amount of starting gold as a wizard um yeah i could even be like on a mission from like a wizardly institution and so like the money is not even mine so i'm like even easier to scam <laughs> hear me out hear me out for d'angelo you don't hear yes. take your earmuff earmuff <laughs> d'angelo can't know this do, all right doing it you you uh, wait to so, me when i can do it Okay, perfect. Okay, so for reasons, I also have proficiency and tools for forgery and thieves tools. So I imagine- I have proficiency in forgery as well. Okay, so I imagine- <laughs> I do too. I... Oh my God, we're gonna this be a bunch is... of scammers. This is so <laughs> good, this is so good. Um, So I feel like it's very easy for like, if I was already kind of paired up with, okay, D'Angelo, you could you could put his things back on. You can you can do that. Okay. Okay. So since I we've kind of established like maybe in some way I was already paired up with Nameless Wizard. I yeah. very much see a world where we rolled into town, and um, oh my gosh, I already forgot. Uh, I feel like Zeke would have been like, "This is an easy mark," and I was like, "But then I have." I you. agree, but also hear me out. <laughs> and. <laughs> while we all hang out together and i imagine like we can and especially with all the secret things we just said without d'angelo um oh i feel like God. maybe we've kind of created a mini trifecta where we can get some things done and yeah. now becoming more business partners than yeah. the work. We're, we're yeah <laughs> we're in business together yeah we're in, I, I, I feel <laughs> like we we maybe you know conveniently can go to some some events and things like that because of of nameless wizard and you know it's like I'm protection. You just are. You're the sweet we, talker, and you know. Are we creating a heist group? I think we're actually creating a heist group. <laughs> yeah, I, also, I think that's what we've done. I <laughs> see. This is this is like a group who what they do is they show up, they establish themselves as people who know people or people who can get you things or get you places. Like, I I think also that it would be really fun if uh, Isabel, you just like don't name your character and narratively no one ever bothered to learn your name and just give you a nickname <laughs> <laughs> and then you can secretly have a just name just bleed out every time I, exactly. I love that I think I do want to come up with a name for them but I love oh, the idea yeah. of just only going by and they just a don't reveal it and it's like, just like no one yeah, they, really knows yeah, I'm also thinking yeah. like with this dynamic of the party like maybe being like a disgrace which I mean I'm such a broken record this is exactly what I did in D'Angelo's Emerald Templars games but maybe I'm like a wizard dropout or was like disgraced sure, by my yeah. academic institution or something and like had to leave oh I love this okay yeah we're definitely accidentally a heist group we're yeah, oceans yeah, yeah. five <laughs> yeah. now yeah, like... there you go. <laughs> which Adam I feel like Bard would but bard would i mean i mean you could always throw a barbarian in anywhere because like 
you know, we're always going to need muscle. That's always going to fit in super well with a party. But I feel like Bard with this like very sketchy group would also fit in super well. Yeah. Like, Uh, well, one of one of my spells is distort value. So, oh my god, we're a bunch of scamming. scammers. <laughs> we're a bunch of wow. scammers. Let's go. Uh, oh, I'm accidentally my friggin' Straight priest from Emerald Templars now, too. We're playing the <laughs> same characters. <laughs> we're playing just... the same characters, but we're allies this time. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Is this, this like a, a so reflection good. into personality? Like real life? Yeah, no, it is. It is. I think, I think what I've just learned is I do need to go to therapy. Is yeah, what go, I yeah. got? <laughs> would recommend. D and D is cheaper than therapy. There, True. there you go. Yeah. Not the same, besties. Mental health DSA. D and D is not therapy. There you go. There you, go. Oh. you can oh. have both. You can do both. Yeah, here's a go. here's a fun question for everybody, and you don't have to answer if you want it to be a surprising game. I'm curious. When we all rolled our different stats, what did everyone choose as the dump stat? What was the one where you're like, "This is my low number. This is where it went." Intelligence. We know mine. It was half of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> and strength was your worst one, right? But it makes sense because you were like a wizard. I mean, yeah, strength was my worst one, but it's gotcha. like an eight compared to the other two nines. So <laughs> I, I, it's my karma because I like historically roll really well for stats, um, and then the last two characters I rolled, I have rolled really low. Um, but I do have like really high intelligence and constitution, and my dex is decent. So there like, you go. Okay. I'm, I'm like. Six. You know, I'm so I, glad you made your con high. I made a wizard and made my con high. And people were like, why did you put so much in constitution? No, I always, and I was like, as a wizard, for concentration zero. checks, you Concentration, <laughs> and now the new counterspell. Like, if you can mm. still counterspell a counterspell, yeah. that's a con save. Uh, because I made, when I did my last wizard, my highest was clearly intelligence. Yeah. And then my, I think my second one, I think my second one was con. Everyone thought that was crazy until we were level eight. I had more HP than the cleric did, and yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> "Right, what was the cleric doing? <laughs> uh, not good is what he was doing. <laughs> not a dumping con. Yeah, people underestimate con because it yeah. doesn't feel like it does anything. But as a wizard, it's so yeah. important. I'm literally Absolutely. as soon as we get a, a as soon as we get to level four, I'm taking resilient in that. I'm like, there you go. Let's. I'm never not having advantage on that. <laughs> I it- rolled this. Oh, go ahead. Okay, no, no, go for it, go for it. I was gonna say, I rolled the same for two, uh, my my lowest number I got two of, so my dumps are strength and intelligence. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I love this. Uh, uh, same. Nice. Wait, are none of us strong? We're <laughs> That's so gonna be bad. Of the party. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, there's always Jay. They might come in with uh, 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 here, a Here's what I'm gonna do. Or just another bard, you know, whichever, yeah. Do I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm going into the group chat and, be, and tagging Jay and be like, you should be aware strength is all of our dump stat. <laughs> right. Like, cool. I have a twelve. I have a twelve. Okay, that's not bad. That's, that's not decent. Bad. That's decent. You guys are all struggling with like athletic checks, just trying to. We're just yeah. like, well, I think that fits with our vibe because we're that's all true. kind of like scammers, liars, yeah. puzzlers. Like, we're all using other talents besides like cunning. brute strength. It's all, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, now D'Angelo knows true. exactly how to defeat us. Just right. like put a heavy door, put a heavy <laughs> rock in front of us. Like heavy rock, done. Exactly. A heavy rock, any beefy thug can beat us. Like, like, all right, I'll be back when you guys try to uh, beat this. So I will recite the the different uh, modules that I have here on like a D12. Essentially, is what we'll roll at the very end of everything. So there is Descent into Avernus, which is a Baldur's Gate uh, uh, situation where you just essentially go in, uh, down into the depths of sort of like the plains below and then try your best to like get out, you know, do all these different things. Um, there is Eve of Ruin, which is one of the newer modules where you actually fight Vecna. That's an epic level sort of situation, very necromancy, cosmic, you know, sort of horror in different situations and all that. There's Out of the Abyss, which is actually an underdark adventure. Um, you start off as prisoners captured by drow and have to escape and then go on this like epic adventure. Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which out of the, all the options is the most whimsical, yet still, you know, terrifying in its own right um, situation where there's the Witchlight Carnival that arrives, uh, you go and attend it, and then something something happens and Feywild. Uh, the Ghost of Salt Marsh, which is a seafaring adventure, that's the most I know about it. Um, because I've never ran it before. There's the uh, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, which is a Dragonlance adventure, which is more 
uh, military sort of base, very Games of Thrones-ish. You got to like, you know, go to war essentially and defend your place from uh, these invading dragons and everything uh, that's trying to conquer the world. And, and all the while, there's political intrigue as you try to like, you know, get the aid from, you know, different places. Um, Curse of Strahd, which is a very classic gothic horror adventure. The, the, the lands and realms of Barovia are trying, are filled with misery and woe, and you have to try to navigate your way into escaping Barovia or, you know, uh, yeah. dis- destroying the, uh, the, the, the Lord of the Realm or the Baron. Um, Call of the Netherdeep, which uh, is a critical role sort of uh, adventure and set in their sort of setting and everything. And you go on a, a very like awesome sort of adventure and end up with something epic falls into your laps. And you're the only ones that can deal with the situation. Uh, Rhyme of the Frostman, which I have never ran before, heard wonderful things about it. Uh, but I know it's like an Arctic sort of tundra uh, sort of adventure with like a bunch of different sort of towns and everything that you got to uh, figure out different mysteries. Um, oh, I have Ghost of Saltmarsh actually is twice. Oh, my gosh. Um, Princes of the Apocalypse, which is essentially Avatar The Last Airbender, as there are different um, cults, elemental cults, that are around and doing these weird sort of things. And you've got to figure out what's all going on and trying to to, to save the realm, uh, which is a uh, in disarray, very not, not put together at all. Um, and then there's Storm King's Thunder, um, which is you guys are just normal people just doing your thing and suddenly giants start attacking these different areas and you got to figure out what's all happening and going on. Um, so it, uh, being a heist group would fit in, I, I feel like, any one of these situations. So that's already a good starting point uh, and everything. So that's that's awesome. The only one that might be a little bit weird is Eve of Ruin because you guys would immediately escalate from level 3 to level like 10. So... Uh, I would not be mad at that. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. None of you would be so mad good. at that, but yeah. So we just start reading my level ten stuff. <laughs> I haven't even looked. I'm. Oh my god! I, it would. T- it will take me like the full like two weeks to pick out spells. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's like eighty spells that'll pop up. There's so time. many. <laughs> So I good. made eye contact with the first thing on the abilities chart of like level 10 this and I went oh god <laughs> I can't wait I mean even if we don't start at level 10 I can't wait to see these characters at say level it's gonna be so fun oh yeah and I think we'll do because uh, I go uh, Ghost of Saltmarsh on it twice we'll do Mines of Foundelver uh, slash Shattered Obelisk that will take you guys from level like 3 in this case to um, level 10 so that'll be uh, pretty dope, which is the starter sort of adventure that leads into more shenanigans and uh, uh, which is more like action adventure and all that kind of stuff. So that's not cool. Um, so with that information to everything, uh, do you guys have any other comments, things you want to change or anything like that about your sort of characters that you have here um, before I make you guys decide who's or sorry before i roll a die and make one of you roll for the module that we're going to be in for the next like six months or so i don't think i've got anything else i think it'll be nice to figure out what the module is and then we can all keep talking either here or offline of like how we fit how we fit into the world yeah Yeah. Yeah. that's gonna be fun we can elaborate some things because i didn't initially start with thinking i was gonna play a con artist but i feel like me either i was like I really just ended up seeing like some of these things that came with Scribe and came with like being a tiefling and I was like, huh, I sort of made a little goth girl. Okay, let's yeah. go. <laughs> I thought it'd just be fun to have the thieves tools. I was like, there's a lot of reasons to need to pick a lock. There's so a, many. Not, not that they so need to be nefarious. <laughs> what if we're a high script with no rogue? That's very funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? I know, I've got yeah, five I daggers. I'm half a rogue. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> so good. Oh, All right, well. so uh, I rolled the d4 and I got a one, so that means Benji, uh, if you could please go, get Benji. out your favorite d12 and oh. then go ahead and roll for this module here. All the pressure. Let's go, Benji. Let's go. And I just broke my dice back. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a sign. If I've ever heard one. Yeah, exactly. The dice bag is trying to protect us. I don't like that. <laughs> Wait, no. Seriously. It's okay. There we go. Um D twelve, you said? Yes, a D twelve. Uh one is okay, I'll I'll check. All right. Here we go. Tell you the results rather than tell you the list that way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Eight. Eight. Uh. That is Call of the Nether Deep. Uh, the critical Ooh. sort of adventure. Has anyone ran uh, Call of the Nether Deep before? No. Okay, so this would be a super cool like like uh, entry into this. So that's awesome uh, because I actually I think I have the assets to that one for uh, roll twenty. So I will uh, try to get that uh, set up and everything. So and then can you remind us? What that remind? Was again? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, remind you what? Of Call of the Nether Deep. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, get you the synopsis here. Um, da, da, da. So, uh, long ago, a war between the gods of good and evil uh, scoured the surface of the world of Exandria. Uh, both the noble prime deities and the selfish betrayer gods imbued their mortal champions with supernatural gifts that granted them strength enough to challenge their divine foes. Uh, the greatest of champions... Uh, what? Uh, actually, should I be reading this part? Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Read ahead, read ahead. Make yeah, sure you're no, not spoiling like, anything for you know us. What? I better not. So essentially, this adventure uh, uh, is going to start off in a small sort of community. Um, you guys are just normal people. I, I mean, up to you. It's, it's really up to you. you your backstories that you gave were already like pretty good. Um, so let me go ahead and get you guys that name of this initial town. Uh, so... Uh, Jigo or Jigao is the uh, first starting town. Uh, J I G uh, W. Right in both ways. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, so it is located in the northern uh, Zorhas uh, on the banks of the El- Emerald Gulch and the uh, Iflon River. Uh, it's an amalgamation of coastal villages that were originally uh, settled by several nomadic clans of orcs and goblins. Uh, Jigao is now home to humans and other folk as well, and the city gained a significant drow population after Jigao became a part of the Kryn dynasty. Um, it is a very like, chill area that's ran by a council of elders who help resolve internal conflicts, and it has a, a healthy military sort of presence uh, and everything. To and So it, it ensures it ensures that everyone is safe and sort of uh, secure and families can be, you know, uh, started here and uh, live good, meaningful sort of lives. Uh, there is a unique thing that is happening um, in this time, which is a festival of merit. Um, so there is uh, this huge festival that spans all over Jigao. Uh, everyone is participating, whoever wants to, where it's pie eating contests and it's like puzzles sort of like. You know contests and everything uh and all these sort of different events that that are encouraging people to come by if they win they end up getting these like sort of magical items that can help them in, in you know small ways and large ways and all that kind of stuff and the unique thing about call of the nether deep is you actually have rivals that are uh set up as antagonist npcs um that, that the module has some that are there however we can always have it customized to be polar opposites or anything that like you know um the it's Shadow the Hedgehog based. situation. Are those it's rivals? Based, exactly. A bunch of buff himbos. <laughs> 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 a bunch of Are jocks. Those rivals <laughs> deducible. Uh, yes, so, absolutely. It's such an important question, Benji. Thank you so much. Uh, I am your dungeon master, so the, the villains, the monsters, everything here is seducible if uh, okay. you choose to go down that road. So, um, so funny. <laughs> Okay, cool. So uh, let me see here if there's anything. So it's, yeah, like uh, Jigao is a coastal sort of like village. Um, You could live a good life here. There's a a range of sort of different like uh, um, social economic sort of like areas. Uh, So you can choose to be nobility or impoverished or out of town that just got into town, whatever you'd like to do, and then be able to to go sort of from there. Um, So with that information that you'll be playing Call of the Netherdeep, uh, do you want to talk amongst... uh, yourselves about any changes you'd like to make, anything you'd like to solidify, what have you. Because um, in the Festival of Merit, you have to establish teams that you're going to use to be able to, you know, participate in these games. And the team with the most, uh, you know, merits ends up winning the overall championship and all that kind of stuff. So your rival is, is, a, is a team itself, yeah. I have a question about tone of this module. Mm-hmm. Um is this just like a more lighthearted one? Is it? Does it get more serious? Like, what's the scope of the adventure? Yes, I guess? that's a great question. So, uh, essentially, uh, it's a, kind of like an epic uh, fantasy adventure. So, what okay, happens cool. as, as like the the main story? Without major spoilers, because this this happens very 
very soon. Yeah, you don't have to tell me anything more. I just wanted the vibe, you know? Oh, you're good. You're good, yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll give you this piece of information uh, that um, you will come across someone of great importance and you will have to to help them with a, a task that they have that no one else can help them with essentially it better and not for- be moving because <laughs> yeah, we can't lift anything <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah it's like i i'm out i quit yeah uh, and then, uh um, yes and then this journey will take you to, you know beyond areas you ever thought you'd traveled before and uh, push you to beyond your limits and do um we, for- do we have to help this person like become like prom king or queen or like seduce like someone is this like a she's uh, all that situation <laughs> hmm, that's a really hard thing to i think that, that i think that kind of gets spoiler ish so i will oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. yeah yeah so uh, i will let you uh, experience the module from there but that's essentially the 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 adventure where you are normal people that had greatness thrust upon you and now you must navigate your the, your the reigning days on how you're going to get through this essentially and uh uh, but it does Are lead we, to epic adventure and go for- is it going to be unbalanced to have us at level three do you think with this module or does it start at level one i think this i think this module actually recommends starting at three cool uh cool. yeah I, i'm pretty sure because you are one of the Love stronger that. groups and that's why you guys are uh ahead of the curve when it comes to uh, the other like groups and all that kind of stuff um oh, i gotta share artwork with you guys and uh play it in some way yeah yeah okay cool um. Yeah, and I think the other thing I'll I'll do is to be able to, <laughs> yes, just make this. She's all that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's a great segue. We'll go into the rivals. So one, you're gonna have a one to one of rivals and all kind of stuff. So, what I did with another group that played Call of Nether Deep is I had someone else. Uh, create the rival for you know the another person or whatever so for example if it was like isabel uh you know's character this wizard that has like no name that anyone knows of uh, at least and all that kind of stuff and is very like uh weak strength wise then the polar opposite might be a, a paladin that's like completely charismatic and super swole depending or whatever uh so we could always do that. But again, this is the session zero. So this allows you guys to be able to, to pick and choose what you'd like sort of for this um, or just dominate it and just like ruin their life. Uh, whatever <laughs> you guys want to do as a group. So uh, does anyone wa- want to volunteer to go first? And then whose rival would you like to create? I'll, I'll go. F- I'll go first because sure. I have an idea for Isabel's rival. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. It's Jen's rival. Okay, okay. perfect. Love that. Sorry, no. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Edie? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're the one with with the... Basically, my idea is your rival is your worst Yelp review. <laughs> Basically, someone... Someone, someone who someone, hated your service? Yeah, who hated your service so oh. much and has vowed vengeance oh upon you. and that would get under my skin so That's badly really so i would be really deeply annoyed by this it's for like so your many reasons one one star review or or whatever and it like totally brings down your weighted average oh my god because two of I my said, party like, members died <laughs> not do <Yeah>. again <laughs> yeah because uh, I, I could have done a better job myself we should have even hired security we didn't need to do this oh my god yeah, because like strength and intelligence are my lowest ones. Charisma's not far behind, so <laughs> Amazing. Oh that my would, god. Yeah, oh I love that. Um do you have any vibes for what they would be like? Uh for mm, maybe charismatic <clears throat> and attractive or uh just stoic and strong or whatever combination you'd like to do. Well, mm. And if you need mm. to th- if you need to think about it, I can always move on to someone else. So while you, while it's you... a fairy barbarian named Kellogg's. I kind of picture what I'm picturing is when they hired Edie. Edie. Yeah, they were like it was like an unassuming person. Now it's been years, and they come back and they have totally buffed up, Perfect. totally got swole because they want to crush her head. Yeah, like, let's go. Let's they want go. To... <laughs> is it a Kill Bill so, situation where they're like, act, or is it more of so of a just, I want to put you down in your place and ruin your business? 
Ooh, I like the Kill Bill suggestion. Like, this is... Maybe, I mean, it could be as dramatic as one of their party members died, and they blame, True. you know, yeah. Edie. Because that would, especially if it was like, it could be like, oh, they were like a level one, when you guys were, when we were, everyone was level one, you know, you were a level one, um, like monk and they were like level one adventurers and you're like, I can be your guide. And then like, it was just a dangerous situation and you can decide maybe Jen, like it, how much of it was actually Edie's fault versus just like the circumstances. And you were a, but, a like, hired muscle, right? Like, uh, like a mercenary sellsword? Yeah, kind of. Okay, that was yeah, kind of my thought. Like for, a guide, yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah so I, went, yeah. I went with like a guide background. So like more guide than actual cell sword like muscle, gotcha. okay. but like but you know, like with a with a basic element of protection. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Transport. it could be a situation where uh you made the call in a dangerous situation that yeah, it would be too risky to save this one person and risk yeah. more members of people getting hurt and they Absolutely. always held against you because they could have survived because but, that yeah. would be genuinely so heartbreaking like yeah. there's very yeah. few things For- that i think your character could do that would warrant vengeance but like i could understand someone being like oh yeah really broken up about that no i can also definitely see it being a situation of like like potentially even having gotten into the situation from like a little bit of overconfidence mm-hmm. um, and then getting to that point of like, this is going to be bad. And the choices are we all go down or it's just that one and yeah. like made the call to kind of get everybody else out. And like, yeah, that would be terrible and probably something that she has tried mm-hmm. to put behind her a little bit and, and learn from to be yeah. better about it. And I also like the idea that, and I guess this is a little bit up to D'Angelo, it's like, this is supposed to be our rival group. Whether I, like, if this person has gone off and bulked up and whatever, do you recognize them? Would I even recognize them? Do True. I know that yeah. this person oh. in the group, it wants Especially me Especially like, dead. it could, and that's even more insulting to them because it's like, you've like met so many people in your line of work and in yeah. your life that it's like you don't you can't fully place them you don't remember their faces exactly yeah yeah like there's that, something maybe familiar about it but it's like i can't yeah. place it because they're just so different and yeah 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 i like that I, yeah that, that's really good oh, that would then, be very annoying to be on the other side it's like you're you have so much hatred for this person that and they, they don't, don't even you? remember yeah, exactly. you. Yeah. That would make me <laughs> the, so angry. The M. Bison situation, like the day I entered your life, it was the most important thing. For me, it was just a Tuesday. Tuesday, was, no, yeah. literally, <laughs> literally. Very like, much that energy. And like, we're going to be in this competition and I'm going to still be sportsman-like about it mm-hmm. and just be like, hey, you know, like, good luck and whatever. And this guy You're just going to be seething. Yeah. Broken hearted and all that. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I also like the concept of maybe it's even a situation where they wanted to try to save them, but they, you knew that they were too weak and too, like, yeah. they just wouldn't be able to do it, so you maybe knocked them out and didn't even give them the chance to try to save their companion. And yeah, I'm, I'm down for that, too, that I was like, yeah. I need to save you from yourself at this point. Yes, so. and they, they have survivor's guilt and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. that's great. And then, okay, cool. So casual, super chill, and then... Yeah, uh, super <laughs> chill. <laughs> Oath of blood vengeance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oath of blood vengeance. <laughs> totally fine. Amazing. Okay, cool. And then... Um, uh, any strong feelings about going next? Otherwise, I will choose. I'm trying to. Th- I'm just trying to think about who said. I'm also trying to think about the fact that we still have a mystery other character. Yeah, That's we have one more mystery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I I have a pitch for Benji's rival. I don't know if it's great, but mm-hmm. um, I have thoughts about Benji's character as well. I feel like okay. your past is so rich to delve into. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say potentially it's your ex is current. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much better than anything I thought of. That's perfect, actually. Oh my god. That's amazing. Uh, okay, so Adam. Maybe maybe my patron is still talking about me every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, so, I have nothing outside of that. Uh, no, that, that I mean, that's a great concept to go off of. So it could be a situation where, like, uh, yeah, maybe it's a situation where your patron does keep a con. Obviously, they're your patron, so they have to like engage with you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and you've ex- been. Ex- do you feel like it's someone you know, or just someone uh, that is someone you haven't met before? My patron. No, no, you. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the the new your partner patron's of your patron. New love yeah. Oh, the pa- the patron's new paramour. Um, no, I don't think I would know them either. Okay. I think it's fun if they're just like another warlock, like they're all, you just share right? a patron, but they're like actively dating their patron. <laughs> yeah. 
Warlock, perfect. And then, um, yeah, Warlock or... Yeah, even maybe Cleric or Paladin. <gasps> oh, that's yeah. fun! That's so fun. That's amazing. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, we could just make them everything you uh, Zeke is not, essentially. Uh, yeah. So, where so you smart. Might... <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. But then... ugly. <laughs> could be. Yeah, no, maybe... the rivals have to be so hot because otherwise we yeah. wouldn't hate them enough. <laughs> Amazing. What it about didn't... ugly hot? Do you know what I mean when I say Yeah, I do ugly know exactly hot? what you mean, Benji. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You're like, damn, they God. should be ugly, but they they're don't... so hot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They don't even try, and they're already exactly attractive. <laughs> like, 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 like Willem Dafoe is always. Yeah. Like, <laughs> for real. Where people are like, where I'm, I would totally with Willem Dafoe, and other people are like, really? It's like, other people are crazy, so. You're there right. You You're there correct, there. Benji. <laughs> now I'm taking it way too far and imagining that your Archface current paramour is just Willem Dafoe. Is you Willem Dafoe? <laughs> Willem Dafoe? There you go. Let's fucking go. Amazing. All right, Willem Dafoe. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, so they're the polar opposite of you, everything that you're not. Uh, do you feel like Zeke is, uh, I don't want to say vain, but you take care of yourself and your appearance and care about, like, you know, Perfect. That works. And then that way that they are rugged and they don't even try. They don't care they, and they just exactly. look good. Yeah. yeah. And then it is uh, uh, everything you're not for better or for worse. And then, uh, for uh, Adams, are you for sure playing the lucky Heron gun? Uh, yeah, I'll jump, in the, I'll jump in the bard space. Because and- I feel like with your idea of being like always getting away by the skin of your teeth, I feel like maybe it could be like someone who loved someone on your previous party and they died and you survived and they blame you. I would blame me too. <laughs> right? Like, because you probably already have like survivor's guilt being getting out of all these situations from the skin of your teeth. So it could be just someone who like, cared very deeply about someone on your party maybe even someone you were also close to yeah. um and then they blame you and i feel like a part of his uh getting out is like dumb luck and then maybe he caused caused, they caused some chaos yes, yeah. Yes, yeah 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 there, there's a character uh and he's a dance bard right yes, yes. Oh, there you oh go, yeah. there's got to be a dance battle at some point. Oh my <laughs> there, there gosh. Go. Are they just another bard? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, cause of death. Can there be a you got served moment? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, cause the death of a, a friend, lover, ally, whatever. That's way uh, better than I was going to go the silly route and be like, it's whoever has your lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> <Ooh>. dun, dun, <laughs> dun. Oh, that might be too early in the campaign yeah. for yeah. us to to know to find your that. foot yeah, yeah it's like Amazing. the final competition they pull it up yeah hey. <laughs> you monster um, Amazing. Um, i i need to give props in the, to the chat where props are due since we made the willem defoe joke so <laughs> carl has said bill derival bill derival i need to put that in there i was like that's so good and Real, i'm though. upset Real. about it Okay, so build a rival. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so build a rival is brilliant. <sighs> um, okay, so always survive, cause death uh, of a friend, lover, ally. Yeah, because there's a character in Curse of Strahd, um, and I won't say what the name is or anything like that, but they're essentially they're cursed that they are to never ever die. Uh, they live the, the whole time. Anyone tries to kill them, someone else dies for it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So whatever negative energy comes towards them, and it's usually anyone who's closely associating with them, that's kind of where it spills off of. And like, so he, uh, so they kind of like um, stay away from everyone intentionally so that no one else can, you know, get that uh, death by proximity situation. So it could be a situation where like, it's a blessing, but also you'd kind of prefer that some bad stuff every so often happens to you and uh yeah could they could mark you as a uh an omen of like you know a cursed uh individual or whatever the case might be and then want to yeah. seek um vengeance or uh something like that uh, 
Um, oh, hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, and then um, Jen. We still need an Isabel. Yeah. Yes. So was Isabel like, did, I can't, are you, did you decide to be the wizard dropout like your previous character again, or? I feel like, yeah, like dropout or disgraced, maybe like left whatever wizardly institution I was a part of or something. Um, cause just cause I feel like that fits with the party a little bit more. Could you have been expelled by a rival in school? Like, so it's an yeah. old rival? Yeah, I guess that's a good that's a good thought for a rival thing. Did you did you get dropped or fl fail out or whatever of your own doing, or did someone like sabotage you? I like the idea of being sabotaged. I think that's very fun, especially if you Practical. came from a family that does have some more like is a little bit more comfortable um, from the wealth standpoint. Maybe maybe somebody else was like no we gotta level the playing field a little bit and it went too far and you ended up getting kicked out yeah that could be fun right amazing okay good and then um it could also be a cool situation of someone who like um wants to bring you back like bring you back home and you've you've walked away from your life you dropped out of college and all that kind of stuff you're trying to start a new life and then someone from your old life wants to bring you sort of like like you know just come back you know we'll we figure it all out and everything like that whether it be an ex-lover or siblings? a friend or a sibling yeah you know, that could a be twin. fun yeah a twin d'angelo like, <laughs> <laughs> like we're, we're we're like at the competition we go Wait, wait, wait a wait. second. Yeah. <laughs> but they're polar opposite. They're swole they're and they're like two a fighter. Nameless yeah. wizards. Two yeah. nameless wizards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I would fully believe you would just cast like a duplicate and be like, yeah, because oh, that's, that's a thing wizards can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that could be that could be super fun. I love the idea of an ex being like, come back. I also love the idea of like um familial responsibility of being like you were supposed to take care of the family and you're like you've fucked it all up that could be super fun um maybe it's celestial masquerade that's poisoning my mind are you the heiress or of like your house or whatever and they need you back to be able to continue this uh and without you there things are things are falling apart yeah. it could be yeah maybe yeah maybe i hate my family and i left them and i was like screw you guys actually <laughs> and that would make sense because no one knows your name if they did then they would know you're from a yes house. okay yeah, yeah. i can't share my family name yeah. yeah and they're like you need to go come back and get married like yeah like you need to get married you need to join this corrupt family let's you need to be doing like you need to be in your place i'm basically gonna be playing like um the, the other character in the emerald Templars game we were in <laughs> <laughs> amazing okay so uh we will say that there is a um uh do you want it to be an ex-lover, or I guess you could have both? Uh, an ex I don't care. I really of don't the house care. That's he has is going on this mission to bring you back home, and all that, and then uh, yeah, make it super scary. Yeah, let's make it super servant. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or like you know how like in like uh like a lady in waiting type person where like you know how in like medieval Europe there were like it was like they were. <laughs> technically also nobility but they were like subservient nobility right oh, like so it's like there's still that well it's like there's still that weird like um like think like marjorie Ty tyrell's like ladies in waiting it's like mm. they're still technically important in their own right but their families are less important so there's yeah. still like a weird power dynamic but they're not full on like servant they're also like nobles oh, in okay. their own right so it could be like yeah. a cousin situation where they uh, are also powerful but nowhere near as powerful as you and might be jealous of your situation and be like, why are you running away from this? You could have everything. Yeah. Or okay. it could be like an ex lover who okay. what like wants me to come back and is like, why would you throw all this away? Like I don't have the position you have and you're wasting True. it. Like yeah. you don't even appreciate the power. Oh, that and I would love that. And at first that they're very like tender and kind and after so many rejections they get very stone cold hardened and then uh, Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So 
<laughs> and then build a rival. Perfect. And then build a rival. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have gotta have some levity in there. <laughs> uh, okay, so it wants to. Oh God. Breathe. Already the drama. I'm so excited. I know. This to is bring... gonna be like two different blood feuds. <laughs> to bring no name back home. Yeah. I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. And then it could be a situation where. Uh, truly, like you like you mentioned, like this corrupt house, like it could be a nefarious, like uh, infamous yeah. house. I and yeah, I that, totally like your... the idea of like e- that. My family is like evil, messed mm-hmm. up nobility, and I'm like, mm, yeah. And I even hate your you guys. rival <laughs> knows not to mention your family name because it will bring you ruin if like you know people know you know yeah where you're from. Maybe it's like an opposing force in the area, and uh, you're behind enemy lines right now. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, what if your name is just Scribe? Yeah, scribe? scribe? Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Right. We only say... know you as Scribe. I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try to come up with like a good nickname like that. That's like just my job. That could be fun. That's amazing. Okay, cool. Uh, Otherwise, I'm just gonna start calling you Bookie. <laughs> oh my god, please. I yeah, I feel like your character would have like a really stupid name for me. Yeah, there will be the nickname everyone knows for you. There will be my dumb nickname, just and like none of this will be dumber. your actual name. Which I think <laughs> yeah, would be yeah, really yeah. fun because, like, uh, again, in your house, you're extremely important, and everyone bends yeah. a knee to you. But here, you're like noodle arms because you're like so you can't. Yeah, like pathetic, like, 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 point, like so lame and like barely useful. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, cool. Um, Love it. The scene interaction where like we're just yelling at uh, scribe to like pack the. Th- Pack the wagon, and then none yeah, yeah, of us yeah. can pack the wagon because we're all fucking exactly. Yeah. Just like, ah. I do have, I do have part of a order of scribes. Wizard is that you can cast. I think it's only once per day, but you can cast a ritual spell in the normal amount of time. Um, so I, ha- I picked a bunch of ritual spells. So I do have unseen servant, which oh, I feel like know. fits so well in like a, I had a privileged upbringing. <laughs> like, oh yeah. It's, there's someone invisible sense. here to do my work for me. <laughs> we don't need strength when we've got someone who can cast things. Like, exactly. yeah. Like, just, yeah. You can just pick I do shit have, up I think with I your also, magic. I think I also did. Did I take me? If I didn't have Mage Hand, I will select. I did take Mage Hand. Perfect. Perfect. Now I have another question. Did you get kicked out or did you willingly drop out of, like, ma- you know, college, like ma- Magic College? Because uh, you had enough funds to go to Magic College and you clearly have the intellect to, to complete it all. Uh, yeah, maybe I left. I don't know. What do you think is more juicy, leaving willingly or like failing and dropping out? What if out? you told all of us that you got kicked out, but you did just leave? But I did just leave. True. Yeah. We all think you got kicked out, so we're like, oh yeah, totally. But you yeah. were just like, I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanna I'm, I'm a rebel, but in a totally different way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's I mean... like you tried to get kicked out, but like just because of your family like the school I could they wouldn't can. let they just uh, kept yeah. letting me get away with shit yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I broke every rule that I could I cheated on everything I was like disruptive I was just like a brat I'm and, just going to be like a brat prince and the the, <laughs> the small folk paid the price other like members of lesser houses in the college got blamed for what you did and then they yeah. wrongfully got Drop. So I love amazing. that. And I like went up to like the administration and was like, it was me. I did it. Like, leave them alone. And it still didn't work. And then I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> and I just ran away. I love that. Oh, you know what? This actually could fit in because this ex lover could have been one person that was affected by it. And the way that they can get back to that status and actually. Uh, to continue yeah. to bring you back home and everything will yes, be forgiven for Yes, I them. like messed up their academic career. Okay, cool. They're uh, like, trajectory and they don't want to bring you back by force but after a while they start to yeah <laughs> oh i love the idea that i just have like a bunch of like unopened letters from them yeah i'm yeah. just like no i'm not going back uh has to I feel like the more letters you accrue, the more time you're spending with me, and you're not saying why. You're just like, we should hang out. Yeah, more. yeah. no, totally. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, has to breathe. Okay, cool. So, uh, with that, uh, we just need to have Jay's character, 
um, and everything like that. And I, I, I'll make sure that they have stream time to be able to talk with you guys about this so you can all contribute to the scandals that they will go ahead and uh, dump on everyone. Uh, I like that you know, Jay's not here. We should build Jay's character for them. I know, right? And just, like, go there. Like, Here's you are who you're playing. Now. Enjoy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You're a swole, uh, yeah. Um, but that's amazing. Okay, cool. I think that's uh, great. So, um, yes. Yeah. So now we have the characters, the relationship, the settings, and everything. We know what module we're going to do and a gist of what's going to sort of happen here. So um, uh, keep in mind that these rivals are going to follow you unless somehow, some way, you, like, murder all of them. Uh, but, like, they're going to follow you. Yeah. <laughs> some way. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, Don't some way, how. the other rivals were murdered. Um, and what level are they, by chance? Uh, just... I think they're, they're the same the, as us. Yeah, they're the same as you guys. So level three. So they will continue to level with you guys and get better, oh. faster, stronger. And then uh, their own well, motivations maybe. and you know convictions will also begin to grow as you go through this and all that kind of stuff. So that's fantastic. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and I think I have, let me see. Let me just set this up really quick. So, um, and once again, we will be playing on Roll20. And thankfully, I already bought the Call of Netherdeep um, uh, assets and all that, which I am so hyped because I actually know some people who worked on this module. And it's like oh, nice. really cool. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Where is it at? That's Prince, Curse of Stride, Dune. Fallout, and then oh, it's good actually. It's really good. Fallout, dude, fallout, baby. I'll be back in just one second. Of course, yeah. Yeah, unless you guys want to dive in, which I don't mind. Um, we can always uh, end it pretty soon. That way, uh, um, we can start the actual the adventure. Yeah, yeah, whichever. Yeah. 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 Jay comes back and be like, you're fighting a boss. And it's just like, yeah. what? <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like we should wait for Jay and, like, fill out fill out their, um, their character and rival. Yeah. Maybe before. Yeah. As, and as then, much as and I'm then, itchy to do stuff. but I know. Right? But I want to. I also want to figure out what kind of relationship we have with. Yes. Jay's character and have fun building the rival and everything. So, yeah, Absolutely. that totally makes sense. Uh, let me see here. Oh, maybe I don't have the assets. It's weird. I thought I did. Let me go ahead and see if I can make a copy. <laughs> Just start session one now. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, and I need initiative. As uh, so for everyone here that that's like you know sort of watching. Uh, Death March has a unique situation where the viewers can actually engage with the story. If you're on your browser, you can look down and see the actual uh, list of different things that can happen, whether you can uh, heal the party a little bit, you can give them, um, you know, ins you can give mass inspiration where everyone gets a point of inspiration. Um, and then uh, you can also do a Bane boon, which is simply just giving disadvantage or advantage uh, as you see fit to uh, whichever player. And then um, there's also an NPC, which I have to create that that helpful NPC that every so often will show up and be able to assist in one way or another. Um, probably just be uh, like a, um, a summon from Dark Souls uh, to be able to help out and everything like that. And then you can uh, add extra baddies to a combat situation as well to, to truly let them, um, you know, squirm a little bit. So it'd be, it'd be, pretty, it'd be pretty great. Uh, do it, cowards. That's so funny. Now, just start session one now. Roll initiative. Yeah. There we go. Let me go and see um, where the heck is this game? Um, let's see. No, this is like too far. Let me check over here. I like that if you watch what's been happening in the chat, is that there's a lot of people who came in and they're like, there's the jokes, there's there's the funnies, there's the supportive things, and then my people are the ones <laughs> causing problems. <laughs> like, we in want blood as, like, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, love you all. Uh, on oh. this on this menu of of things, D'Angelo, I'm curious. What is blessing of wisdom? 
So yeah. Blessing of Wisdom uh, drops a, a nugget of information from the module that will help you in oh. something. So it might be like... It's like a IRL legend lore. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's cool. like... Uh, so you might be like in an air Because... Uh, again, the, how if you've never ran a D and D module before, they're very sandboxy in in some regards. So if you, you it encourages you to explore the area, but you know exploring the area takes time, and and you know you, uh, and with based upon um, natural descriptions of things, it might not seem appealing to go and waste time going into an area and checking it all out. Uh, however, um, if someone gives you blessing of wisdom, then it will like tell you the most relevant you know piece of information that's in your vicinity being like uh hey though that that crypt over there seems very like foreboding to you or appealing to you or whatever that way it's like okay i know for a fact if i go into that place it's gonna yield something big or like whether it be narrative or a magic item or whatever the case might be it's um something that helps you out in one way or another so uh let me see what this uh game was because um Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. Perfect. And then item drop, does that make us drop an item or do we receiving an item? Uh, no, actually. You, bad guy drop an item. You stumble upon, uh, yeah, it could be narratively, it could be one of those things. You know, you could uh, trip over something like a rock and you go and examine it. It's actually like a sword that was like buried in, with time, you know. And then you're <laughs> like, oh shit, this is something important, you know. Uh, and there'll be a table that I will roll on or make you roll on. Uh, to be able to find uh, something of value sort of uh, in there and everything. So uh, with my luck, it's probably going to be you're going to find the Sunblade, like session one or something. Uh, and then it's just going to destroy everything within the campaign. Uh, the idea that item drop could have been one of us drops an item had not even occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, and then me you either. said it and I went, oh, that would be <laughs> so yeah, right? mean. <laughs> You're like, and your arcane bonus is gone. Uh, <laughs> like, like, like you're what? crossing a bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, tragic. Oh. So good. Oh my gosh. I was like, okay. what if that's what that had meant and we didn't know until someone cashed it in? <laughs> that also would have been a great. It's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tipper, wh what would you like for this? Would you like their item to drop or would you like yeah. to find an item? Oh my god. Knowing. Uh, past experiences with these things, they absolutely would go for. Oh blood. yeah, we would drop all of our things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me switch the character sheet to uh, 2024, and I think this will be good. Okay, so I will create the roll twenty map on my side uh, for this, and that way you guys can uh, get things ready for roll twenty. Is anyone new to roll twenty here? I'm pretty sure I played with all of you on roll twenty, except for Adam. I have technically been in Roll20. <laughs> yeah. I am um, not good fairly. at it. Okay, no worries. I can, I can move things and measure things. That's essential. That's, that's all you need. need. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. And if you, things. If you want my character sheet in Roll20, that's not, it's, there's no oh, planet. I will say, no, I, I've used in the past, there's a Chrome extension that yes. allows you to roll your D&D yeah. &D Beyond, Beyond character 20. sheet. Yes. In, yeah. okay. So yeah. we can set that up off, off camera do, and like it makes it really easy. Yeah, I do recommend doing Beyond 20 because uh, anything that you do in D&D Beyond, it will port over to uh, Roll20. And then so you can also link spell descriptions and all that kind of stuff. And it, and it now works with 2024 because like the first day 24 launched, it was broken. It's super, super broken. But now yeah. it's, good. It's, it's fine. Um, so that is good. Uh, let me get this stuff going up here. Uh, you know what? Let me just set this up as well. So let me give you guys this uh, link here. Um, so we can also do the other thing, which is to uh, get character art of your actual character. And then uh, you could put it in the actual Discord group chat. That way... Ooh. Uh, I can make tokens for you guys and get you guys into um, roll 20 here. And then uh, is the vibe that you guys want to hold off until Jay is here to actually start the main? Okay, that's, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, if you want to do a TPK next week, that's, that's or next time, that's completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> Jay shows up and be like, okay, so we're actually doing session zero again because we finished early last time, went into a fight, got a TPK, got to start over. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out we needed someone strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk our way out of everything. Uh, 
Hey, oh, I've got so trying. much speed at this point. I don't need I to talk. I just gotta be able to hoof it. <laughs> like, yeah. If things to... break bad, look, some old habits die hard. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you'll just like you just need to not be the slowest, and you're good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have two high charisma people, so that's also a big go. benefit. Yes. Oh, that's another thing. So with Death March. As I said, you can tip to be able to uh, influence a story in one way or another and all that. Um, all of that money will go into a pot that will be spent on character art. So to be able to get a, uh, I, uh, I, think, I think it'll start to go individual um, busts or maybe a group. I think a group photo actually might be better. Um, that way an artist will go ahead and make them into a like action pose or whatever the case might be or an iconic moment. Um, in the actual adventure that we uh, have. Uh, and if you have, if you've seen Emerald Templars or any of the stuff, uh, the, art, uh, the artist that I use for that kind of stuff is going to be the one that actually does uh, this particular sort of artwork as well. Thanks. Nice. Uh, Heck yeah. Let's see here. Uh, okay. So we need, oh yeah, Jay's actually commenting. That's awesome. Like, uh, so we need strength. I don't think my character is saved and beyond. I just want to say, I feel one. Okay amazing okay cool i hope they roll up with a fighter or like a paladin or something like that that'd be so good yeah no it's i hope they roll up with someone also extremely weak yeah i yeah. think also that would be funny dance as sorceress like... comes in. <laughs> yes That's actually so, yeah, sorcerer would be so fun that'd be so good okay yeah. cool uh does anybody have like one random thing that they really like about their that their character can do Ooh, like ability wise. I do, but I don't. Yeah. I want D'Angelo to experience it in uh, real time. Okay, that's we fair, need to. Fair, we need to create a player's chat so that we can. Yeah. Oh, we need a scheming chat so that we can plot Scam D'Angelo's chat. downfall. I'm, I'm gonna go through and make sure I have friended all of you on Discord right now, and I will put together. Oh yeah, I don't think I've. Been that's able to amazing. Do that. Oh my gosh. Let me go and get the. Uh... Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't tend to like friend people on Discord because you can talk to them anyway. No, I always yeah. forget. Yeah. Uh, but and chat. then it's like, oh, I haven't, I haven't done a friend thing. Okay, there we go. There's the boundary form, and let me go ahead and uh, pin the uh, tip chart. Uh, by the way, if if chat wants, I, you know, because we always bend to the will of, of you know, uh, chat. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want a, a change accent, you know, marker for like no Ooh, voice. For oh, no, my people cannot be trusted with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> you let me know, you know. So. Oh, no. God. <laughs> Amazing. You know what? Hey, yeah. If we want to, if if my people want to make a separate pool. Uh, that's not a character art pool, but it's a Tucker's surgery fund. I will uo voice for for <laughs> dollars for that. <laughs> there you go. We will get so much funding so quick and be like, all right, here's a for full Tucker. color spread, like a comic book essentially, <laughs> of like your guys' adventures. <sighs> That'd be amazing. All right, cool. Well, to recap, we know what module we're doing, which is Call of uh, Nether Deep. We have a good uh, synopsis and intro of where you guys are, which is Jagao and doing this festival of merit. Um, you have created your rivals, which is uh, Bill DeRival, um, who looks like William Defoe, but is, I'm going to lean <laughs> Paladin for this one, um, who is like smart, kind of like rugged and all that kind of stuff. We have uh, like fucking Gaston. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> Gaston. I'm putting Gaston here. Let's see. Uh, and then... It's really a jerk, but it seems like maybe not. <laughs> but, he, but he's like ostensibly like outwardly the, the quintessential good guy exactly yes and then uh and then we have um uh, Edie. it's Edie, right or id yes Edie. 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 okay yeah uh a former customer of your services of being a guide and everything like that and although uh, it's just bad luck struck you you know the weather it might have been a situation actually what it, what what happened during that time let's get a more, more detail was it actually like a weather event that like a flash flood or would you consider it to be a situation where like monsters ended up being in the area that you didn't expect them to sort of be um or what do you feel like what would have happened i don't feel like it would have been monsters because i feel like I don't feel like at that point in time I would have been like so cocky as to try to take on something like that. So I feel like it was maybe more of like more of like the guide side of things of like there was some kind of like natural impediment that it was like this is not a big deal. 
It's a maybe a flood. Like it's some I water. Think, it's the fine. idea of a flood could be super. Cool. I think. Yeah. I think flood yeah. and cave uh, would be because yeah. in this area it's a Terrifying. coastal region, so there's grottos, yeah. yeah, and all that kind of stuff. So it could have been a situation where you guys went cave dwelling and to show them some cool sites or whatever, and then it yeah. just flash floods. No one yeah. could expect it. Water or I was like rising, I picked a out. I picked or a bad like cave this... for us to, to like camp out in for the night. I was like, oh, here's some shelter, and like yeah. did not do due diligence, and yes, like and it ended flooded. Up, yeah, and yeah. it flooded, which is was, such yeah. a scary. Like, oh yes. yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, my scary. wife. The reason it, it came to mind was because my wife had recently watched a documentary on the the boys and everything like that from I think oh, it was Thailand. Yeah, they got stuck yes. in those under. Oof, so terrifying. Scary. Yeah. So uh, you, you can't slay that. So yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, weather events, and it truly would have cost the lives of everyone had you stayed behind and actually yeah. tried to get that last person. Uh, okay, so I'm accidentally now the character that I had in mind has now accidentally become a uh, a scammer goth girl with like a little bit of a phobia of like rising water somehow, <laughs> or like claustrophobia too. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. The time she smells the rain on the wind, she's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> like a dank, like dank, like cave smells." We're probably gonna be going in some caves. This yeah. is definitely oh, gonna come up. I can up. tell you, you absolutely are. Like literally, probably within <laughs> yeah. session one or yeah. two, you're gonna be doing that. Yeah. And it, well, yeah. If we're gonna spend any amount of time in a cave, I'm gonna get obsessive about kind of like checking Safety. for like, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh my gosh. So yeah, you go. Mercury was in retrograde. That's exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. Man. Which that actually uh, in the world of Exandria, there is a like blood moon. Essentially, there is a like, you know, and all oh, kinds of stuff. So uh, we'll get more into details of that because I, uh, you know, personally have not delved into all the critical role Exandria sort of lore, but I will now immensely because we're doing this setting. Excited about. Yeah, it should be really cool. So, uh, Jen, if I get anything wrong, correct me, because uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, perfect. And then we have um, for Lucky. Uh, your your character's name is Lucky, right? Uh, yeah. It's like Lucky Harrison, whichever. Harrison. Oh, that's right. That's Harrison. Oh, that was right. Yeah, I'm Harrison Ford the Thirteenth. I remember Harrison this now. Ford. Yeah, there you go. I got so stuck on Lucky, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And then, uh, yeah, so you always survive whatever situation you're in, and your proximity ended up causing the death of uh, a, a another person um, and everything. So, I, actually, we should probably, like, get more into that. So, is it, what is, was this a situation where it was a group of former friends, or, like, like how did that go down for uh, that situation? Uh, well, I thought of one, and it's that's kind of, I guess, maybe, like, more of an origin story yeah. um and then there's others where it's just like maybe it was yeah like heist goes wrong and lucky does something that probably should not have done and like the building goes up in flames but he's able to get out because he you know he's fucking lucky and mm -hmm. he slip and he's small so he can slip, he can go through small uh, small spaces so he gets out but then other people have died but like you know, he's just like, oh yeah, well they. Do you feel like Lucky, Lucky is a coward? Do you feel like they're brave? Uh, do you feel like you left the scene way too quickly? Like polar opposite of Jen, where Jen was the pr competent guide and like made a judgment call that like truly there's no one that can survive this, or maybe like you turned tail and ran the moment things got hot, literally. Things got hot. Yeah. Um, I could see a little bit of like cowardice going in because I mean he's a dancer at heart and a thief. <laughs> yeah, he's or like he's not, he's not, looking out yeah, for himself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's not there to fight or like really get it. Like, it was probably told it was an easy job. And then, like, it wasn't. And he's like, all right, uh, you're not paying me enough for this. All right. I, I like that. Because now, get out, now it kind of like makes me feel like instead of the whole omen thing, you actually are just a coward and you always survive because <laughs> you're the first to get out of there and yeah, yeah. You know, it causes problems for everyone else. Shuts the them. door behind him. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then like you ensure oh, no. that you survive uh, these situations. Like my spidey sense is going off. Gotta go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, not only that, but I, I definitely want to lean in that maybe your rival is a part of a like a mafioso or like a, you know, uh, an actual legitimate gangster that you um, truly did wrong towards and like yeah. let them down and they've come to, to actually hunt you down and uh, and free you so in. So juicy. Perfect. Love it. 
And they were also an ex-lover. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Why not at this point? And then like, uh, okay, so... Um, well, he is the 13th for a reason. It's true. Yeah. Big family. I was family also going to say, I'm like, I'm so curious about what Lucky's, like, family life was like. I feel like that mm, could be fun to, true. like, uncover. Like, why are you so focused on your survival? Like, what did Lucky have to go through and, where they're, they're like... He's like, yeah, I just have to look out for myself, and that's just how it is, you know? Like, that, to me, reads as, like, you didn't have people you could count on, you know? And did you actually want to be a noble, like, like or, or wealthy, or uh, was that, like, now going to be just being a commoner? Because uh, you could have been wealthy because of all your nefarious deeds from the past, like your previous heists or whatever, yeah. or it could be a situation where you, yeah. You well, I guess... Have- the idea was essentially the society that he grew up in or like whatever the, the group of people that he grew up with yeah the 13th child for whatever reason to keep the wealth or to keep the crops going or to keep whatever going is always sacrifice so that there was a group of him and some other people who were like essentially led to slaughter and he got out mm. and so he's lucky Gotcha. Okay. And all right. Cool. So that gives me a lot more information. And then for currently no name or scribe. Uh, I know. I need to come up with a good nickname too. I'll whichever. come up with like a real fancy like um, noble name, and then I need to come up with a fun nickname. Now I, I came into this being like, I'm so bad at picking names. I don't know what I'm going to pick. And now I have two names I have to pick. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and you uh, told everyone you dropped out of mag- you know, magic college or magic school. You're just kind of a wanderer trying to figure out your new life and everything like that. And in reality, yeah. you come from a nefarious home or a nefarious like, prominent house uh, that is not well received here. And you are in- essentially hiding um mm-hmm. and uh meanwhile someone from your old life is trying to bring you back because it can restore their name and honor as well as uh you know just bring you back to your sort of like home and everything like that and then okay cool so i am thinking um that where id is a monk their rival uh will be a rogue um that feels that, that tracks yeah very good that's yeah. like because it, it's like a lot of overlap and type of skill set while being very Still, different exactly yeah and then um we already know uh bill uh build arrival is going to be a paladin um, of their <laughs> we have to introduce so him as good. william <laughs> yeah william william knight so knight of rival <laughs> knight exactly. of Derival. Oh. I am uh, Bill Derival, first of my name. And, uh... So, okay, I, this is actually came in at the perfect time. I don't know if you did it on purpose. So one of the people that's in the chat right now is one of my people, Carl, uh, who on the previous stream game I did was infamous for the memes he would create during the game. Um, and it was one of the things I missed the most about us not doing it anymore. So anyways, he's already gotten started. Uh, so I'm dropping this in the our group chat um, for everyone to be able to say hi to Bill Derival. Um, I hate it. Thank you. I hate it. Thank you. Oh I God. hate that. That's hilarious. Anyways, look that's, forward to more of that shit while Carl's That's wrong. Here. Oh, You're wrong so for good. that. Actually. I have to show this. I don't know if we can. Uh, oh. It's a broke. It's, uh, yeah, there you go. I get okay, for so. Jay to look at this and be like, what did I do? I miss? know, exactly. Jay's like, going to be like, Mm-mm-mm. what are you guys doing? Yeah, Jay's uh, at TwitchCon right now trying to live their best life. And the like, group chat is like blowing up with all this like stuff. It's so good. All right, so let me see here. Um, okay, so that is great. So we know that Bill Derival, first of his name, uh, is a paladin. <laughs> and then uh, for Lucky, um, for theirs, this... Uh, they could kind of be anyone, right? Because it's like it's just someone re- related to... So, like, honestly, D'Angelo, oh. if you're filling yeah. out a rival party, you could just pick whatever class you want that would make that... That party yeah, more I think for, for Harrison, uh, their rival would probably be a ranger for the tracking and uh, trying to. Because they've been tracking no, you down. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, okay, cool. And then for Scribe, 
uh, and all that. Um, so we have a rogue, we have a paladin, we have a ranger. Uh, and you're a wizard, so I think they're going to be a warlock where they could not reach your levels with their natural abilities, so therefore they had to cheat a little bit mm. to get um, mm -hmm. up there. And then, perfect. Uh, okay, cool. So we have this good range of stuff. So they have a paladin, they have a rogue, they have a ranger, they have a warlock. Um, and that's a pretty good, well-balanced sort of team. And then we'll see what Jay actually brings to the table as well. They're more than likely going to go uh, beefy, I think. Like, they're they're usually like a team player in that regard. Uh, and then, so that means that their opposite will be not that. Maybe a sorcerer or a... Um, uh, or something else that's cool love, or maybe even druid yeah that'd be cool i love the suggestion that harrison is being tracked by dog the bounty hunter but oh my god dog. It's actually, it's a dog. <laughs> wrong so you're good. wrong for that <laughs> there's not even a dog race is there like there's not the equivalent of a tabaxi it's just like uh how is there not the, the, of I all know. the animals they have there's that's not a dog crazy. i refuse to exactly. believe exactly crazy i refuse to believe this let me you know what let me shifter is maybe the closest okay, thanks yeah. Shifter is maybe the closest, but there's no just like dog people, which is wild. Um, oh, that was the other thing we were going to do, but I don't think we're going to do it anymore. Uh, uh, where it was going to be the, the source book is going to be like was going to be pulled in, but I think we'll leave it be. I think we'll. Uh, I think I'm excited to delve into this world. I don't think. Yeah. Can, yeah. 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 I think it'll be totally fine as is. Um, let me see here really quick because I'm. There's I'm friggin' hedgehog folk, but there's no exactly. dog. I know. Oh, and the owlin. Oh, there's you know like owlin and kanku. There's like two different bird people. And aracocra. There's three different bird Aracocra. People. Oh. Jeez. What's the natural predator for, for rabbits? It's like. Uh, a we could hawk. do a hawk. Yeah, every, yeah. Yeah. It could be a, a yeah, hawk. Could be a hawk. Yeah. Um, perfect. Like, so literally everything eats poor rabbits. Yeah. yeah. Any predator. It could be a hawk. It could be a tabaxi. Um, God, it'd be like a scary gangster. Also, it, it, it <laughs> definitely be a, it'd definitely be a hawk. But since you did Harrison Ford, we need like I, oh Ethan Hawke. I think is uh, is that an actor? Let me see here. Oh, that is. is an actor. Ethan Hawke is. <laughs> yep, Ethan Hawke. Sure. Yep, there we go. I'm so glad to know somebody else has the same level of actor knowledge as I do. It's like is that is that a person? <laughs> yes. It'll be Ethan Hawke. There you go. Fantasy. Um, there you go, fantasy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, good. Let me uh, create them really quick, and then just make them. Oh, what do we got? Uh, Bard. Oh yeah. Okay. So if Jay goes, um, that might be fun. If Jay actually goes fighter or something like that, they could be a bard. That'll be their their rival. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, and then. Let me get this going really quick. Let's do Ethan Hawk, a level three ranger. Um, proficiencies in I'm gonna, I'm gonna BRB really okay. quick. Yeah, go for it. Survival to track you down. Oh, yeah, they have guns in this. He's gonna be packing heat. Uh, Gonna have a pistol. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Uh, that's amazing. Rabbits are the chicken nuggets of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's wild. Okay, so they're gonna know. Um, oh yeah, common sign language is now a new language. That's awesome. Oh yeah, I took. Thieves can't, I think. Did I? Did nice. I? Yeah, I'm not used to playing a character that only knows two languages. Which is like, as an American who barely, like, I screw up English enough. And I certainly don't know, I'm not fluent in another thing. I'm just like, I only know two languages. But I'm so used to playing characters that have, like, intelligence scores out the ass and know, like, six languages. I'm like, oh, I know two right now. Ugh. <laughs> That's amazing. I always love that situation where it's like, all right, does anyone know Orcish? And they're like, no. It's like, cool. You have no idea what they're saying. You can do a Not disadvantage cool. yeah, a perception check to, to try to understand. You're like, oh, okay. So, Aracocra, perfect. Cool beans. All right, awesome. 
build arrival. I'm so excited for that. Uh, they know Elvish and then wind callers. All right, cool. Well, I think we've done enough in this session to be able to uh, end it here. That way we can set up next session with uh, Jay's character choice, the rival, um, and then be their, uh, you know, everything about their character and then be able to start off this next uh, uh, this campaign with the actual like Festival of Merit, a super sweet, cozy sort of like experience that will no doubt follow throughout the entire campaign and never, ever threaten you at all. Maybe emotionally, but not physically. Never. <laughs> uh, so that'd be great. Well, uh, is D'Angelo lying to us again? <laughs> he that would never. never. Is that what's happening? He would Me? Never. It was like, no. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you guys all for for being here and seeing our session zero of Death March. Uh, next session will uh, begin their actual journey in this adventure where we're going to be diving in to Call of Nether Deep. I have a lot of homework to understand Exandria and all the things I've been like keeping on the back burner. Now I've got to like really understand what's all going on uh, here. So uh, we play every other week. So the next session that we will be doing uh, will I think be the fourth or the fifth? Let me see here really quick. Um. Uh, yes, the fifth Saturday, the fifth. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. So we'll see you guys then. Thank you again so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful night. And uh, oh, actually, before we actually end, uh, why don't we have everyone do the outro so that we know wh uh, where to find everyone? And we're gonna do back to uh, Benji. Tell us uh, where you can be found online. Hi, I've been Benji, and you can find me online at Chance Forty Seven. Uh, Twitter, Blue Sky, Instagram, all of those. Uh, and I am so looking forward to this. Yeah, awesome. And then Isabel. Yeah, uh, my name is Isabel. You can find me ever on the internet at, at Isabel is okay. Perfect. And then Adam. Yes, uh, you can find me everywhere at Adam Islamis and here every two weeks. Two weeks. Perfect. And then Jen. Uh, I'm Jen. You can find me everywhere at the underscore low Zelda uh, and also at Long Dog Dice in, in all of the places. If you could think of it, I'm probably there. So, Yay. Amazing. I uh, want to thank you guys again for, for being here and I hope you have a wonderful uh, weekend and we'll see you guys later. Bye.